So every couple of months, you see me show off a new Creality 3D printer, and they can get a little confusing. Now, obviously, different printers use people with different needs. But to keep it simple, my current recommendation is if you have a bit of extra money, the CR6SE is the best 3D printer for first-time buyers. It comes almost ready to go, just a few screws to turn. But if you like to tinker, are a student, or just don't want to spend too much money on a hobby you aren't sure of, the open source Ender 3 is usually about $200 and it's fantastic value, which is why it's the best selling 3D printer in the world. I'm personally very proud of the Ender 3 because I did the open source hardware association certification for it. That means anyone can make this printer anywhere in the world. There's nothing proprietary here. For consumers, this means they will always be able to get cheap parts from lots of vendors because manufacturers don't have to license anything and there are so many Enderfree's out there. One of the other wonderful things about the Enderfree is it's incredibly upgradable. It prints great out of the box, but there's a huge community that likes to mod and make improvements to them. Many of these upgrades can actually be 3D printed on the Ender 3 itself for no cost other than the plastic. Most of rest range from a few cents to about $35. None of these mods are actually needed. You can always run the Ender 3 stock, but mods can improve print quality, speed, and convenience a bit before you start modding your printer though. It's important to remember you should always run any 3D printer stock for the first 100 print hours before you mod it. If you have to do any troubleshooting, it's hard to know if the problem is the original printer or the mods that were added. If someone tells you to upgrade your new 3D printer when you first get it or as you assembled it, make sure they are willing to sit and troubleshoot it with you. Because if you need support, the people helping you need to know the mods aren't the problem. So again, the first time you buy any new 3D printer, always run stock first and mod after 100 hours. Everyone has different upgrades and mods they like. While I usually want my Creality printer stocks and the modified, these past few weeks, I have been trying out some of the community's favorite mods for Ender Freeze and today, I'm going to show you the upgrades that I think either offer the best value or are just plain nice to have. The first upgrade we're going to look at is also the easiest to install, filament path. If your filament fit isn't smooth, if it jerks and jumps as the extruder pulls on the reel, they can show up as very fine imperfections in your prints. But fortunately, it's easy PC to print out something to deal with that. See, like butter. The next upgrade is one of the toughest to install. It's a new control board, but it also makes a pretty big difference. This is the SKR Mini E3. This board is actually made by my good friends over at Big Tree Tech, so I can vouch for them. I don't even need to, just Google this board. Everyone in the community loves it. Great documentation, great quality control, but 
you pay for it at $30, which is a bit of an investment on top of a $200 printer. That's why the Ender Free doesn't come with them. But if you love your Ender Free, want a bit more out of it, no need to buy a more expensive printer. Just pop one of these bad boys in. Here, let me show you how. change the ender free display to the big tree tech display this is very colorful and it is touch screen uh, let's go inside and take a look so now the tft sd card goes to the side instead of the front very com uh, it's much easier because it's uh, used sd card instead of the micro sd card let's go to menu movement Okay, I set it to 10. Let's go left. That. 
it's very quiet even I'm running my uh, other 3d printer in the background and because it's touch screen you don't need to turn the knob anything now let's take a look at the leveling So it has four points. That's why I don't want to add. I don't need to add any BL touch or anything because these four points. If you press point one, it just goes right to uh, the knob position. Okay, this one is pretty good. Let's go to point two. Okay, I would like to print something, but uh, first I am going to uh, change the belt tensioner here, do a little bit of uh, adjustment before I print anything. One common issue with ender freeze is where right over here on the extruder. See how the filament kind of slowly cuts a notch there? It takes hundreds of hours, but it happens. This can be fixed cheaply by just printing a new plastic extruder once a year or so, putting in a bit of PDFE tubing as a bushing, or you can buy a metal one for about $10 to $25, depending on if you upgrade the Bowden tubing at the same time. I used to just swap them out with this metal one if they got too warm but to be honest you have to be printing all day every day for a long time for it to become a real problem so often there is no need if you watch my friend Chuck's video and I'm going to link to his channel below you will know it's possible to print soft women with a stock ender free is it fantastic no, but if you go slow enough, it's more than good enough for most projects that require it. But if you want to print soft filament better than good enough or print it often, you are going to want to upgrade. Some of you might be thinking, oh, direct drive extruder, but that's not something I like to do with an ender free. Yes, they are available and yes, there are people that like them, but the ender free is designed to be as low cost as possible. There is no surplus, just enough for great print quality as is. If you look at the back, the C axis here is only supported on one side. There's only one screw driving it. Now this is fine with a Bowden head because it's so light, but you put a heavy stepper motor on there, you have to worry about sag and so tighten things up a bit which gives you more wear on the rollers and no matter what you're printing you're throwing all this mess back and forth which means you have to slow printing speeds for everything not just flexible filament or you'll get artifacts and yes i know people who have direct drive on their ender freeze all dial in and love it it's just not something i like neither in theory from the mechanics or in practice dealing with the other trade-offs. But again, that's just me. If you like them, more power to you. So what I'm going to do is go with Chuck's recommendation and use the ECR Studer from CME CNC. This is designed for the PTFE tube to come all the way in, and it's actually designed 
to go between the gear and the idler wheel so the Ninja Flex can escape in any way, shape, or form. And the best part is you can mount this on just about any extruder top, including the Ender 3, CR10 Mini, and CR10. I've tried a few other options and truck is right. It works great. Simi CNC is an American 3D printer company, just the nicest people. And I don't get my hands on stuff that's made in America very often. So this is a real treat. Simi CNC sent me a few of these to reveal and that's a much bigger deal than it sounds like. Obviously, any Western company is going to be reluctant to send their product to city famers for cloning things. So I'm always super careful in these situations and their trust is really flattering. Great people. So let me show you how this goes on. One of the best things you can do to improve cream quality is upgrade your filament. I mostly use Eason. The best settings for the filament are built right into the Cura slicing software, so it's easy to use. As you can see here, I have Eason filament selected and profiles of my friend Chuck. His channel is linked in the description box below. I recently worked with my sponsor Creality 3D and my friends at Eason to donate 3D printers and a whole lot of filament into the hands of makers around the world, printing PPE for frontline healthcare workers. My name is Shamia Shun and I am currently making RC3 head shields thanks to Naomi and eSun filaments for sending me a ton. I really appreciate it. And I am currently printing them every day on my Ender 3 printers. And so, yeah. Boom. Huge 
thanks to Xiaomi Ocean, Scott Levine, and Operation Seals Up for all their efforts, and thanks to Creality 3D and Ethan for their generous donations. Bad surfaces. Talking print bad surfaces is like talking politics or religion. It's a very contentious subject. What's important to remember is that the performance of any bed material depends on room temperature, humidity, filament brand, and a lot of other factors. What works great for you up north with your favorite brand of PLA may not work at all for your friend down south with his brand of PLA. There is no best, there is just appropriate for your needs and conditions. Like they say, be like water, use what works. Normally, I prefer soft magnetic sheets. They're cheap locally, so if I damage them, they're easy to re replace. I don't like the various glass surface much because I'm usually not patient enough to let the print cool and pop off on its own. And if you have big, strong dual hands, it may seem easy to scrape prints off, but it's still a pretty easy way to cut yourself if you are clumsy like me. It also adds weight to the bed, which is going to result in more artifacts at higher speed than if you use something lighter. Still, glass is very popular with a lot of very knowledgeable people, so it's certainly not a bad option. What I've been using lately is this Creality PEI print plate, build plate. I used PEI years ago, but stuff kind of stuck to it a little too well. Then Joseph Pusa started using it with a flexible steel plate, and that seems to be the right way. Creality now has its own version, and that's what I've been using. It's pretty easy to make the switch. If you already have a flexible magnetic service, you just use the PEI sheet instead. Otherwise, it comes with a new magnetic service you can add here. This is $27, I think. Top card, I'd say, is a convenience, not a necessity. In theory, filament can drop in this fan vent, so people like to put a cover on it. Never happened to me, but hey, it's basically one cent worth of plastic, so why not?
Okay, this is my regular PLA Benji. I'm gonna be honest with you, there is no significant differences before or after if you're looking for better print quality after all these upgrades. But I don't regret it at all because it is a lot faster, faster and easier to use interface. But if you want better print quality with PLA, in my opinion, this isn't going to give it to you but it is much more user-friendly and much more easy to use. On the other hand, let me show you the TPU result. Look at this octopus, there is no stringy, and look at its tentacles, it's so soft. They're so soft, there is a dramatic result compared to the PLA. With the upgrade of the CNC, uh, CME CNC extruder, I'm really happy about it. The result comes out great. Look at this uh, wallet. I often give away this wallet to uh, other people as a present. It comes out great. With the, if you print a lot of TPU, it really has a phenomenal uh, result. But uh, with the PLA, it's still there are not a lot of uh, quality difference. But overall, I'm really happy about the upgrades. I'm happy about the CME CNC extruder and all the other upgrades is just so much more user friendly and the usability is much better. What about bed leveling? Nope, I don't use it. I level manually at most once a month. For a small bed, it really isn't needed usually. If you want automated bed leveling, get a CR6SE. It's the best bed leveling I've seen. What about laser engravers? Those lasers really aren't safe. There's no vending for films. If they bounce, you'll get random scarring. So sorry, no automated bed leveling, no laser dials for me. But there are loads of videos out there on how to install them if you, that's what you want. I don't feel right showing things that I don't believe in myself just because Creality is my sponsor and sells them. I know the comment section on this video is going to be crazy with all the mods people think I should put on, but didn't. So let me have it. What's your favorite Ender 3 mod and upgrade and why? That's it for today. Until next time, if I can do it, anyone can do it.